So today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I sewed King George III's breeches. Same as my other videos, all the pattern books and books that helped me throughout the entire process will be in the description below. So let's get right into it. You want to start by sewing the two front panels of your breeches together across the centre front seam. With that sewn together, it's then time to add the front lining to the forefront opening. With both right sides together on the outer fabric and the lining fabric, so a straight stitch just along that edge. With the edge sewn, flip the fabric the right way around and add a fell stitch just across the top. This will allow the fabric to have a nice curve which will sit nicely on the breeches. Before adding the slits to your opening, you want to make sure you've got your plackets pressed and ready to be added. These are then slip stitched onto that raw edge of the opening flap. To finish the full front opening, you want to add the extra flaps that will be on the inside of the opening. These are just sewn across that raw edge that still needs encasing. The next step is to add in the pockets. This probably has to be the most tedious part of the entire costume for King George. So you want to start by sewing your pocket bag just to the corner of your breeches. Then add a small slit into those corners to flip the pocket bag. With the pocket bag flip, give it a good press and then sew around the pocket bag. You can either just add two stitches for reinforcement or give it a nice neat finish and do a French seam with it. With the pockets in place, it's then time to move on to the back panels. These are sewn across the centre back seam up until the vent. Make sure to give the seam a good press. With both the front and back panels constructed, you then want to sew them together. First, start by sewing them together across the inside leg. Then sew them along the outer side seam, making sure not to catch that pocket bag in it. With those together, you've got the main construction done. From there, it's then time to move on to the waistband. For this, you're going to want to cut out four panels and add an iron-on interfacing onto one side of your waistband, just to make sure it has structure. With the interfacing in place, sew along the sides and upper edge of the waistband, bagging it out and then attaching it to the top of your breeches with a slip stitch on either side. Before we move on to the knee plackets, you're going to want to make sure you add an interfacing into the bottom wrap on the knees, as well as a gathering stitch just along the outer edge. This will just reduce the amount of fraying on your fabric when it comes to adding the buttonholes. The knee placket is then sewn with a slip stitch onto that gathering stitch, encasing it within it. Once again, give it a good press to finish. With both knee plackets and waistband in place, it's then time to add the lining to the breeches. To put the lining together, sew them the same way you did the breeches, and then sew the inside leg and then the outer side seam as well. With the panels together, it's time to sew the lining into the breeches. Using a slip stitch, sew the lining into place around the waistband and vent, as well as the knee plackets. With your breeches fully constructed, it's on to the final step of adding the buttons and buttonholes, as well as adding the eyelets to the back vent. And with them in place, you'll have yourself a pair of King George III breeches. If you want to stick around for my upcoming projects, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.